Sorry for everyone's eardrums that's going to hear that. Da, 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 da. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Now that we have your attention. <laughs> that's what we learned this week. Episode Yay. 98. Oh, man. Two more episodes. Two more. 99 Two more is on my birthday. I went, cool. I'm so pissed off <laughs> that episode 100 is not my birthday. How fucking great between, would that have it's been? between our birthdays between our birthdays yeah but that's bullshit i hate it i'm just kidding <laughs> it's its own little birthday. it's its own birthday fine fair enough so we have my birthday then our podcast birthday mm-hmm. and then your birthday that technically makes no sense because if it was <laughs> no, sh- yeah. sh- 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 <laughs> it's the 100th episode birthday yeah. not the 100th and 4th okay. episode two year birthday <laughs> so that's the other crazy part is we hit episode 100 we yeah. celebrate that and then literally four weeks later is our two year Jesus. of podcasting. We've been doing this for two years. Two fucking Jesus years Christ. we've been doing this podcast. That's wild. <laughs> to think that the three of us that have go? stuck to something for that long and dedicated for that long. Hey, man, it's fun. Even it's though fun. Drake's not here this week and we understand that. Yeah, we but. all dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> but Drake, we understand. Yeah. R.I.P. to the Blueberry, a.k.a. Oh, Drake's yeah. car. Poor guy. That poor thing. Finally dead after so many years of being. I'm not gonna lie. Tortured. Yeah, I was gonna say. I got, it's like a 215,000 miles. It lasted on a it. lot longer than I expected. Yeah, it's, to last. it made it. You yeah. know, it, it lasted its lifetime. It was out so. here. So yeah, Drake is not here today. So it's the Jake and Walker show again. Again. Back at it. These are usually our here. highest performing episodes, anyways. So mm-hmm. I don't know why, but when it's the two of us, we get like 370 views on our videos. Fuck. If it's three of us, we get like 150. Drake, you're fired. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I was like, damn, all right. I don't know why people like us so much, but apparently they do. What, we what, all know why. We all we get why. it. Yeah. <laughs> the Baron Twink show. Oh, yeah. Wink. <laughs> Emphasis oh, on the wink. God, I hate it. <laughs> um, so, this week, I, should we do sk- I feel like we haven't done a skill in, in, in a month. I, I'm not going to lie. I have too much stuff to catch up on this week to do a skill properly. Yeah. Is that is that wrong? I mean, it's fair. I got too much. So at least we've kept the show going yeah. for this long, even though we haven't, are we fucked up our skills these I, last I month. did get your, your website finished finally. So Hell yeah. Yeah. It looks pretty so slick. JD Creations website is getting dropped here soon, Actually, folks. I'll probably launch it today if you want me to. You hear that? It's exclusive, folks. It's exclusive. <laughs> Actually, if that happens, it'll drop before the day before you guys see this oh, episode. Oh, yeah. So. Fuck. Still exclusive. Is not that exclusive unless it'll be there when you see this. You join our Patreon, patreon.com backslash WWLTW podcast. Mm. Maybe we can just sneak it to you for you know a little a day early, the day of Ooh. access. You know what I'm saying? That'd be good. So, yeah, check us out there. This episode is also, also brought to you by JD Creations LLC and Astro Design Company and yeah. Hardware Coffee coming soon. Actually, it's here. I don't even know why I keep saying coming soon when Hardware Coffee Dude, is gotta, already out and rolling. I have to hit him up again. I, I we, We've been trying to connect for weeks about. Getting his website yeah, finished off. Yeah, I, I feel bad. I feel so bad because I've been caught up with other sh- other shit. Yeah, so. he's rocking and rolling, man. I know. Just, yeah, just pushing coffee like it's. I'll coke. reach out to him today and see if I can get get him back on track with that. He's just killing it. Love it. Um. So yeah. Uh. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah. So we haven't done skills, and that's on us, and we feel bad about it, and that sorry. But but, but I have to say I'm I'm really proud of what we've been doing as as a group of people. We we've yeah. all been busting ass. And uh, succeeding really well in the yeah. last few weeks. I mean, so. if you include like you know me, you, Keith, and Drake, I, I mean, three of us are uh, businesses are expanding quickly. Yeah. Um, I've signed, I think, three or four new like job contracts in the last month. Yeah. That I've just, I mean, it's like every week I'm going somewhere in this this next like for March, which is great because my birthday month. It's our hundredth episode yeah. month, and I'm just busting my. I gotta go to Munster, <laughs> Indiana, in a week. For a project, isn't that in the middle of nowhere? Uh, it's like right on the border, basically. Okay. Of it's like right off, just uh, east of Chicago, kind oh, of. That's not like too bad, southern though. Chicago, I yeah. guess part. Um, but then, then I got to shoot up to Madison here in a little bit to do a project. Hopefully, I've got yeah. ones here in town that I got to get done. I'm just like, damn, rocking and rolling. Yeah, Astro Design Company's out here just kicking ass Oof. with projects, dude. I too uh, many projects. Too many projects. <laughs> I, I have, uh, yeah, I have 
finally got a huge contract coming up, so that's that's really really excited to see. And Hell yeah! That's a, technically an international contract because it goes up into Canada and uh, Astro Design and Company about to go international, so, folks. Yeah, that, that'll be our first international contract. That's uh, well prestige second, worldwide but, out here, folks. Yeah, dude, I'm really pumped. Boats about and hoes, boats, <laughs> boats and hoes. <laughs> and then you got Keith with Hard Work Coffee, who's just busting his ass, just slinging coffee mm-hmm. like it's dope, just out there. It it's not actually dope delicious. in the coffee. It is. Like, it's very good coffee. I was wearing the, uh, I was wearing my hard work coffee sweatshirt the yeah. other day at the gym, and one of my one of our other buddies who knows Keith, um, is like, is it is the coffee good? I was like, you haven't dude, tried the coffee so good. yet. I was like, how have you not had and it I, yet? I, I don't and he's like, I don't know. I just haven't tried. I was like, oh, dude, it, it's killer. I mean, I will say we got a couple bags um, that that we had to taste test for a company that we were trying to work with, and yeah. those ones were a little off. Mm. But it wasn't. I don't think it was his fault. I think it I mean, was. Like, I think it was the timing of everything. It could be. Yeah. And but I. But otherwise, every other cup of coffee I've had through uh, hard work has just been killer. We well, also have to understand, like he he's doing this as a one man operation. One man operation so, like, on a half pound roaster. Yeah, exactly. He's running with a half pound roaster, <laughs> and he's slinging. And, and pound the, bags. the consistency is mind blowing. Because yeah. like, if I were to do that uh, on a small roaster, I would be fucking up my shit. Oh yeah, I, I mean, never his, have his data that he like keeps track yeah. of is mind blo- mind boggling oh, to me. That's another thing I was going to talk to him about. I, I was going to build a roaster app for him so he could manage everything from a tablet. That's what he was. I thought yeah. the one that he has now he was able to do from a tablet, but he doesn't have. He was using like his girlfriend's tablet for right now. Yeah, yeah, so, he was yeah. using something kind of weird like that. Yeah, yeah, Heck yeah. Setup, And then though. you got Drake, who's just busting his ass at his job, getting a new car, getting a new car. He's got. Dude, uh, I'm so I'm so sad I, about Blueberry. Though. I know. I give him shit because I I say well like uh, when he got this promotion at his job a while back i was like dude uh you know drake's a very frugal guy Mm -hmm. very frugal yeah pretty good with his money you know he always puts his money aside for the essentials so like brent is always never had trouble with that Mm. you know he's always got extra saved up that's good but now in the last like couple months that he's had this new promotion he's like he just i start to see just little squeaks of like him realizing he has fuck you money (laughs) you know where it's like for his expenses it's fuck you money it's not that he's like rich it's just that no it's for his expenses and his overhead yeah he has fuck you money treat himself a little bit so like the one you know we're moving out of this apartment and uh the one day he was just like i'm just gonna fucking hire people to come move my shit i don't want to move it i was like drake the old drake would have never have dreamed (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> would never have even made the oh, thought man. of hiring people to move shit out of our house. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm just, I just don't want to do it. And I was like, Drake is getting the, he's like eking into the <laughs> fuck you money status. And I love it. It's so I, funny to watch. I, I all right. So we're, we're both kind of looking at uh, buying houses within the yep. next year or so. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to move my shit either. No. I, I, I want to buy old new shit pretty much and just have it shipped in. And hire some people on TaskRabbit to come and set it up for me. I just, like, I look at the stuff that we still have to pack up here, and it's not a lot, but the stuff that we do still have to pack up, and I'm like, how much of this shit do I really want to take, and how much do I just give to him yeah. and buy new when I go live somewhere else? Because, mm-hmm. like, a lot of it I don't, I don't know, like the pots and pans, I don't need them. Right, yeah. Like, I'm going to buy a new set and yeah. be fine. You know what I mean? Like, That's kind I of my need thing. my furniture and the stuff in my room, as far as the kitchen goes, like maybe a couple of the bowls, obviously my coffee cups and some yeah. glasses, but like, I mean, if, if I have like a good like living shit. room set or something that's different, like I'll, t- I'll take that with me, but I don't, so right. like I, I need all new shit because all my shit's old anyways. Yeah. So. I mean, all the furniture out here is mine. Yeah. So it's like, I gotta take that. And then uh, I'm like looking at these, I'm like, we bought bar stools. They didn't have bar stools for you guys? Right? I have a fucking bar anyway. I mean, I have a bar at the place I'm moving in, but there's already stools there. So I just have extra, bar. I, I'm just going to take them. Yeah, I guess I don't know what the fuck to do with them. Dude, I'm taking I'll, at least I'll buy one. Them off them. I'll, yeah, there you go. There you I'll go. take one. You can take one. Drake can take the other one. We're fine. We'll uh, just carve our names into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fuck it. Unless he has a bar, I don't know. He might have like a he standing might, yeah. bar, and then I'll just be like, "Fuck it, you take them. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit." I don't know. It's just like half the stuff is. It's it a looks like one of those now. bars that you use to fight lions in the circus with whips. That's actually where we bought them from. Oh yeah, the old circus. circus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You can still see the claw marks. <laughs> and the blood. <laughs> and the blood. Uh, of the guy, not the mm-hmm. not the lion, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to, to like move out. I'm excited to start looking at houses. Like I've been kind of looking around at houses uh, right now, and uh, I wouldn't buy a house at this exact moment. 
I wouldn't buy one here at this exact moment. Yeah. This is a seller's market out the That's ass. That's what I'm saying. Right now. So like I, well, I think that there's gonna be a housing crash here in the next couple of weeks. I mean, M- maybe not the next couple of weeks. The only thing I like about Sorry. buying a house right now is that the interest rates are still fucking rock bottom. Yeah. Which is great. That's great. However, Some of these houses, though, yeah. especially in this area, the hot garbage, way overpriced, hot garbage, way overpriced, and it's because it's just a total seller's market right now. I mean, Which, they are. If you have a house right now and you're thinking about selling, uh, fucking do sell it. that shit do because it. you're gonna make a hefty profit mm-hmm. on that thing right now in this area. Um, but I'm not even looking here. I'm looking more towards like Elkhorn and oh, Lake shit. Lake Geneva area. Actually, I would love to live. I in would Lake love Geneva. to live. I want to live. I want to live in Lake Geneva when I'm when I'm rich though. Like have my money saved up. You know, I saw. I've been looking at houses there though. Yeah. Uh, granted, the taxes. I, absurd. Gross. gross. Fucking Don't absurd. even want to know. Yeah. But I saw a house there that just popped up on my Zillow. It was like two twenty five, and it's a three, three bedroom, three bath, or three bedroom, two bath. Shit. All brand new stuff. Uh, kitchen island and everything. I mean, it's gorgeous. I loved it. And it's, I was like, for two twenty five. I mean, that's for that area. Yeah, for Lake Geneva, that's not awful. It's not a bad price. Yeah. And like the whole basement was done. It's finished, completely finished. They have like a mm. uh, workout studio area in there. They okay. have a whole bedroom, I think, with an office. Like, damn, fuck. God All right. damn. So yeah, you know, okay. there's stuff out there that's in the price range. But yeah. granted, again, the taxes for that don't even want just know ridiculous. What they are, yeah. <laughs> gotta be outrageous. But I've seen ones in Elkhorn for, I mean, one seventy five, one eighty five that are nice. They're three bedroom, two bath, fifteen hundred square foot, sixteen hundred square foot, and I like them. You know, okay. I just have to go get pre approved and see, like, okay, what are you gonna give me? Right. Yeah. See, that's my issue right now. It's like I'm, I'm actually trying to save up enough cash where I can just buy a house outright. What? Why are you screaming? So, because like my first house that I, that I'm gonna get, I don't need it to be a nice place. Yeah. I just need it to be a, a place that I can live and fair enough. Or whatever. Fair enough. But I will use that as a form of equity to get my next property. Yeah, you know, there you and go. Then there you go. So I'm trying to save up probably like a hundred to one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and then yeah, get, just buy a house outright. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, so. my problem is too is like being self-employed. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like because I have a full-time job too. Like, I just yeah. feel like I can't even use. That as the like money I'm stuff. making from being self-employed because they're just going to look at that and go, it's just very yeah. hard to well, get pre-approved and also, with that amount. Also, so I basically just have to use, too. Yeah, like you're not exactly. getting like a constant paycheck, so they're going to look at that. So. so basically, I just have to use what I make at my, my full-time job yeah. now, which thankfully I have that that makes a good chunk of change that I know I can use to get pre-approved yeah. off of. It's not like a minimum wage job. you know. It's a decent paying job, but it's just like, man, if I could just combine <laughs> that <laughs> with what I make at my company. Can we talk about how credit is great. bullshit? It is, but God damn it, I, I, I made sure I got a good credit score, that's yeah. for sure. Mine got fucked up a while ago when I was in college because I had my identity stolen, so Oof. people took out some loans. Which is fucked up that it's that fucked. affects your credit score. Right, because like, I even proved I that it wasn't I didn't do me. anything. Yeah, but it was in the same city because I literally dropped my, my credit card, oh. and then people, people like used my information and shit, so oh. I was like, ah. Nala, what is your what deal is right now? Hey. But yeah, they fucked my credit for a while there. That was bad. Hey, she's so sweet. She is, she is on one today. I don't understand what her deal is. Come she here. might actually come sit on you. Yes. I don't. Oh my God. Is she going to do it? Come here. <laughs> we might have a guest on the show here, folks. There Yay! she is. Oh Nala in her own right. <laughs> oh my God. She's so neat. It's probably because nobody's been in the house hey. the last day or two. Urgh. So she's just, she might lay down if you just pet her. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, credit score, I get it, it's bullshit, but, like, it was one thing that was ingrained in my head from a childhood, is, yeah. like, you make sure that you have good you, credit. Yeah, make sure because that you don't fuck this up. you buy everything on credit when you grow up. Yeah. You don't, like, you don't fuck around. You don't fuck around. Make sure it. it's good. So I've got a, I've got a pretty good score, luckily. I mean, it helped leasing the car and everything, too, but, yeah. Oh, you leased your car? So I started, when I, when I first got the Kia, I, I leased it, okay. but I, I had to co, like, uh. I had to have a co-signer because my credit score wasn't good enough yet, obviously, because I didn't oh, have, the only yeah. loan up until that point that I had was my student loan, which okay. just paid that off today. Boom, Hey-o. paid off. Um, so my credit score just was like, it was too low. I think it was like in the six or seven. I think it was yeah. 600 something. And so then I did, the co- I did the lease and he co-signed. And when I got done and I did the buyout, I didn't need a co-signer anymore because the lease jumped my credit score to like an 800. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, I think wow, it was like 750. I think it was like 750 when I bought out the car. Yeah. <coughs> no, it was higher than that. Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Oh, good Lord. It's the cat. Oh, my little up? shithead. No, it had to have been an 800 because I went and got it checked when, because I was going to different banks to see what they were going to give me for an APR when I bought the car out. 
And the one bank that I went to said I, it was like an eight, eight something that I got. So it jumped it, skyrocketed my oh, credit God score, damn. thank God. Okay. So yeah, I'm in like the eights now, which is really nice. That's really but, good, man. Yeah. I, uh, so I, I use something called, um, do you, do you ever hear of like Chime Bank? Is chance? it like where you you're basically like do you take out a line of credit but it's on yourself and you pay it back? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, it's, it starts off. So Chime is uh, this bank account that I use. I also use another one called Self, which is actually a company that's based here in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. But uh, so Chime was like this virtual bank that I that I used for like a long time. It just acts like a regular checking account, but once you have so much money in there or like you use it for so long, they give you access to their credit program which you can use to like rebuild your credit score. Nice. So like they'll give you like a, uh, it's a secured loan. So like it comes off of your actual cash. So like whatever you put in, that's your credit balance. So oh, like that's okay. What you, that's what you can spend. Right. And then they, then they put that on their, um, what are the fucking credit union or the, the credit uh, bureau things? Oh, uh, tran- uh, there's a couple of them. Yeah. Well, e- it, e- e- Equifax, 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 Equifax yeah. Trans Trans Union or something. Yeah, I don't remember the other ones. But, but yeah. it, it pretty much posts on the credit bureau's website. It's like, hey, this person's making payments because the money's just coming right out of his bank account. Right. So making it, payments on a credit. Yeah. So your credit score just skyrockets. Nice. So that's a that's great. I mean, great stuff system. like that is great to help. I would definitely I think, recommend it. I think too, like I've been talking about it this week with a couple people. Um, like. I think kids our age, I mean, even younger than us, definitely, but like people our age, especially, mm-hmm. like need to become more financially literate. They Jesus. need to start learning themselves, like teaching yourself how yeah. to do it. And the problem is, is like the schools, uh, <laughs> the schools don't teach it. Like I, if you read, uh, what's that book? Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Right. Love that book. So the first thing, he, the first lesson he teaches you is that finance is never taught in the schools. It's taught in the house. And that's how people get stuck in this loophole is like, mm-hmm. if you have a family, Right. Parents that are poor with finance or they've just been, you know, they're poor. Like that's their, you know, where where they're at. Most of the time. They're not going to know what to teach their children financially, you know, unless they learn themselves. So now you're just they're stuck in this endless cycle. So you have to break that cycle and you have to be the one to go out and be like, okay, I need to start reading more on this. I need to start doing more because I've had I've had people that I work with that ask me questions all the time. And I'm like, how did we? Like, it just seems to yeah. me, like, Com- like how do we not know right? this? Like, yeah. uh, you, you should know this stuff by now. I mean, you're 20-some years old. I mean, I've... But I've, you also put in the work and you studied it. Though. Right, yeah. exactly. And it, so it's, to me, I take it for granted mm-hmm. because I did the work and, and read all these books and, and have studied it and yeah. watched, you know, channel, you know, it's just always been something that's <clears> interested <throat> me is, so I've always read up on it. Yeah. So it, I take it adva- for advantage as to, like, there are people out there that do not know the bare minimum of this stuff. And yeah, it's which like, is kind of oh, ridiculous. No. Yeah. <laughs> this cannot be okay. We cannot continue to let that happen. Yeah. And that's why it's nice where people like um, uh, like Kevin Hart's done it and a couple other like big name celebrities have like teamed up with banks yeah. and basically are going to these places where, you know, it's obviously a lower income areas. Right. And, and they're, they're to teach, talking like, to them. Because they're speaking in their language. Yeah. Like I was watching um, Brandon Marshall's podcast. Who was the? He was a wide receiver for the Bears. Yeah, I like him. Uh, and he has a podcast called I Am Athlete. Okay, great podcast. Love it. Not sponsored, but I will give a shout I, out. I, I, I didn't even know that he had a podcast. Oh, it's amazing. It's him, uh, Chad Ochocinco, okay, um, Fred Turney, and Channing Crowder, and then they always bring in like. A special guest. Is that related to Steven Crowder? Or? No, they're all football players, all <laughs> yeah, ex-football yeah, players. Um, but they were talking one time like how, you know, they, someone coming in and teaching, trying to teach them, like a banker tr- coming in trying to teach them about finance, or yeah. they were talking about when they were, you know, when they were playing and they were young, right, and they were still playing, mm-hmm. like financial advisors talking to them, they it's weren't what, speaking like, right the over, same language yeah. because they're not from that area yeah so it's like you need people from your area that have made it out mm. of the slums basically yeah. to go and talk to people that are trying to get out <laughs> because they speak the same language yeah. you know what i mean like they they know what it's <laughs> like to not have money and then all of a sudden get bunch of money there, a bunch of fucking money there's something similar to that in the whole startup realm because uh you'll notice like when you go to startup seminars like mm. people telling you to be an entrepreneur and whatnot a lot of people will say like oh yeah to get started just ask your family and friends for money yeah and it's like my family and friends don't, don't have, have money. money to they're give broke. Money. They're more broke than I am. So <laughs> I'm doing like, this to give yeah, my family exactly. and friends money. But that's always the first bit of advice that they said. It's like if you're going to get started before any investor even looks at you, you're going to have to, you know, generate some capital for yourself. And then how do you do that? 
you have to pretty much shake down your family and friends. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't have to no. do that. It doesn't work in areas like this because yeah. there's no money here except for people that have all the money. Yeah. So you're talking <clears throat> in affluent areas like, yeah. like, you know, if I go to a seminar in say like Madison, right? Yeah. I immediately know <laughs> that we are not speaking the same language. Yeah, that's because true. Because we are not from the same demographic. Well, that's what area. I don't get. And I'm not saying that I'm from like a lower inclined. Like no, but I we're, personally we're want, not like in I the was, Madison, Chicago. Yeah, but I'm not areas. in a. I'm not in an area where my family. You know, my my fam, my household income was a million dollars. You know, right. what I mean? yeah. <laughs> just not. You know, yeah. like my family was great. They they raised me very well, and I did not. You know, I we didn't have. They're nowhere near tough times that yeah. other people. Yeah, obviously we've had slower I'm, economic times, but like nowhere near what people, other people in this area have. Right. But we also aren't like, fuck you, money with a million dollars. Yeah, income. exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> so. we, we were able to live comfortably in this area. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good way to put it because you know we, we weren't loaded by any means. But no. Like, I mean, my dad he used to make a lot of money before the plant shut down up in Janesville. Oh, right. Because uh, he was a stationary engineer up there, which was big bucks oh, at the nice, time. Yeah. But then when the, when the whole plant shut down, we had to pretty much reformat our entire lifestyle at the point. So yep. we, we witnessed, you know, the really highs and the really lows of the whole economic system out here. And it's crazy that you said because, like, we did the same thing. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, we when the economic you know downturn started to happen, mm -hmm. um, and obviously, like, my dad lost his job and everything. Obviously, we. Heavily got hit by yeah. that, and you know we had two houses at the time. Oh shit! And so it was like, fuck. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like we're basically just yeah, trying we, to make ends meet. And, we were about a know. week away from moving to Texas. So <laughs> fuck yeah. So like at this I, point, I just, I'm like, oh, it's pretty pretty nice down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, wait a second, Tech, why didn't we do Texas, that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Get a nice Texas, house for cheap get some down barbecue. there. Barbecue. <laughs> right. But um, so it's funny that you say because I was very similar. Like we yeah. we saw the highs and the lows of it, and it was like, okay, cool. I'm glad that it, I'm not. It sucks that it happened because it's hard to recover from. Right. But I'm glad that it happened because, because you I got to witness it. Yeah. And I got to see, like, I don't ever. It made me want to work harder because I was like, I, and I think that's what, too, pushed me heavily yeah. into, okay, this is serious. Like, I, I'm not working for someone the rest of my life. This is what happens, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing that shit ever. <laughs> like, you, I refuse. Do you know what it did to me? It, it made me kind of. A more of a risk taker when it comes to finances. Like yeah. I, I get because it's like if you're gonna have a stable job, it's risky anyways because yeah. you might just lose the job next week. You, you, there's no, there's no. Someone above you could make a bad bid. Yeah. But because they're a, you know, say they're the person above you is the owner. Yeah. You now have the highest target on your back because you make the most money, even though you didn't make the bad bid. Yeah. They're not gonna fire an you're owner. Still gonna get fucked over. So yeah. Now you gotta get fired. So you know, it, it made it so now I invest in, into myself on side projects, even if they don't work out all the way. Like 100%. I, I'm, I actually have class drop releasing in the next three, four weeks. Like a full platform, full, full uh, access, automated nice. working, like working itself. Type class thing. drop coming soon, folks. That hey. one is a sponsor, by the way. <laughs> so hashtag sponsor. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that here in a second yeah. too. But um, but it's like I, I invest in myself now because it's like I can't, tr I can't rely. Like I, my finances can't rely on somebody else at no. this point. That's why I hate working for other companies. I, that's why I hate not having control in how things are formed when, yeah. when it comes to finance. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing. Obviously, I want people to work for me sometimes. No, yeah, so I'm not course. bad mouthing an employer, right? But it's just like, me personally. I don't think I could trust another person no, with, with it's my just financial a, state. If anything, I think it is, to me, it's more risky working for another company yeah. than it is working for yourself. And the only reason being is... My financial status of being unemployed is solely on me. Yeah. My financial status being employed by someone else is n completely out of my <laughs> hands. I could be the yeah. best worker ever, mm -hmm. right? I could be busting my ass. But if they but choose if that not to give you a raise, then right. you're, not, you're never going to And if a that raise. company goes under, I have nothing. Yeah. I, have no, I, I can go to another company, but then that could go under. And then Whereas you start if all it's over. me, like, it doesn't, not, my financial status does not fail. Until until I quit, yeah, right. Like I can continue to persevere, even if I have my lows, right. And I've had them, yeah. Where it's like, oh, we both have. Yeah. I just lost a fuck load of money on that. <laughs> what am I doing? That fucking hurts. I spent but two like, years on a project that made like zero money. <laughs> but as long as like I'm not, you know, as long as I don't quit, mm -hmm. I'm gonna regain that money yeah. and above and beyond that money. I know it. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I think it's more risky to work for an employer, being minded like we are. Mm -hmm than it is working for yourself. And also I get distracted when working for somebody else. Like, like if, if I have a full-time job where it's like I'm focusing on one thing, I can't help but to want to try to improve processes. 
It's like, it actually got right. me in trouble at my job when I was up in Janesville because Where you're trying constantly trying to streamline. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to like suggest like new edits or something to the process, and I wasn't on the process improvement team at the time. I remember so, you telling this. Oh story. my god! So I got written up yeah. for like for offering to make something better for them. They're like, yeah, you went over your manager's head by talking to this guy, so, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna give you a a, a written notice. But like, it's just all these you. things that compound, and you're just like, I'm not working for other people. Yeah, like fuck you. Like I not I'm not. And it's again, I'm not bad mouth. I love the employee, the employer that I work for currently, love them. Yeah. Like they are they are fantastic. Amazing yeah. people to work for. They've treated me very, very well. They know that I'm, you know, self-employed and yeah. they have worked with me on that with my schedule. Which is great. hundred percent. Never would bow I would never say a bad thing about them. Um it's just that, you know, I it's not my dream. It's not yeah, I I there I don't like having a, a ceiling, but it's a stepping stone. You yeah, know, it's, it's, it's something that's helping to get to yep. to your end. Game. And it's it's paying yeah. you know all my bills plus some. Yeah, and it's just like it's it's helping me be able to do less stuff. Yeah, for like you know I don't have to try and find other ways to make ends meet. Right, that pull away from me like outside of that job I don't have to like okay how else am I gonna like fucking you know make ends meet this week, right? Or this month. Yeah. And now I got to pull away from my business. No, it's that in my business now. Yeah. It's those two things. Whereas before I was working like fucking six jobs at a time at one point. And that was, it's hard. A clusterfuck I trying mean, to keep everything situated in my mind. I mean, we were working most of the same jobs together. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was I mean, we were at two bars. I was at one point I was, with, I was working with, I was at two bars. Mm -hmm. I was at the engineering company. Yep. I was, Working on, I was doing something else. What the hell was I doing? This. This, yeah, I guess <laughs> if you want to count this. I mean, this was a weekly thing, obviously, yeah. so we were, I guess we were working on this. And then I was working for, I had enough, what was that one other job I had? You were doing, um, shit. I can't remember. But anyways, I had like, five, and then I was acting, too, just because I was wanted to Was that the other job? It, yeah. I don't know if that was the other one. That was kind of just like a part-time gig. Yeah, it's but, a side gig. And I was just like. Didn't care. Yeah. Like, it didn't seem like a lot at the time, right? I was just like, oh, I don't, God, there's enough time in the day to do it. I'm going to do it, right? And now I look back and I go, what, what uh, how? the fuck? How much coffee was how, I doing? Yeah, like, what, <laughs> how what was, was I, I smoking? functioning? How was I keeping everything <laughs> straight? Because now it's like I work these two jobs and it is just a, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm working more hours now than I was between the five but jobs. But it's more con consolidated it's to the things that you want to be doing. Definitely more consolidated, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, how, how, how did I ever find the time to do that? <laughs> and now I can barely find the time to do two, you See, know? This is my favorite thing, is that now I can I can work my job by, like, I can wake up first thing in the morning and I can have my laptop in my bed and just, oh, I can yeah. be working without pants on. You don't know if I built your app with clothes on. You don't even know if we <laughs> don't have pants on right now, yeah. folks. Okay, this is work for us, and we, we don't. <laughs> I have Walker's pants on, okay. and he has my pants on. Oh, my God. I'm going to shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, no, I, I love that, too. Like, just being able to wake up. Like, I woke up this morning. I was in Kenosha. I yeah. was visiting uh, my girlfriend. <laughs> Stayed the night there. And so I woke up, and uh, she works at a coffee shop that's mm. literally right below where she lives, which is great. And um, ask, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'll tell <laughs> yeah, you. Right. Yeah. I was going to uh, say, I think I know which one. <laughs> so, like, we went to the coffee shop. She made me a coffee, and I sent out or I build out my invoices for the for the month hmm. just sitting there and I was like this <laughs> I can be life. wherever I want yeah. I can do all the work I started a bid proposal for another contract while I was there nice. I was able again last week or two weeks ago I was working I was editing while I was there it's just like this is this is I love this life so <laughs> much is the work hard sometimes yeah. oh fuck of course yes it is. It, like I mean I'm like I said I'm going down I'm driving four hours next week which is not a lot but I'm driving four hours next week for a project that is probably only going to last an hour. I mean, so, but it's I mean, because it's I want the work. Yeah. I like the guy I'm working with. I've worked with him before. I love working with this guy mm -hmm. and I want to help him out. Um, it looks good on my portfolio too. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I'm going to do it. Dude, I'm going to drive down down Indiana. If you want to take my car, you can. Get, <laughs> no, I'm I, good. I got my, my, my full tank is $20. Yeah. Mine's about 25. 20, really? yeah. oh, so I got, I, I'll bring my car and be fine. It's yeah. just like, Hey, you gotta do it. But I would not change that for the world. Yeah. I love that. I love just being able to do that. The only thing I don't like is not having benefits right now. But it's like we're getting to the point where you can start paying yourself benefits. Well, so I mean, you get benefits, of course, with your with your other job, right? No, no. I pay for all of my own. Oh, yeah. Never I mind. pay for my own healthcare <laughs> and dental. And let me tell you, 
it fucking sucks. Yeah. However, the good part, and people don't realize this, mm. for people like us who have less income, I guess, we're not higher income technically, yeah. right? Um, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> according to the government, <laughs> is, at least. Yeah. Um, but even me, I mean, with this job paying me, um, so you get it for your health care usually, mm-hmm. not so much dental, but for the health, they give you a tax credit for every month. Oh. So like technically my health care... Monthly healthcare is like three hundred and fifty bucks. Jesus! But I have an one hundred and eighty-six dollar credit because of my income. Okay. So I don't pay the full three fifty because the government says no, no, no. We'll cover one hundred and eighty-six bucks of that every yeah. month. So I'm like, all right, well, fair sure. enough. Okay. Still expensive. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Fuck, is it but. expensive? And my deductible. High as shit. Like, it's not <laughs> great, right? It's like 3000 which is not even... Actually, 3000 is not that bad. I've seen them way higher than that. But still, I might as well just die if I go yeah, to the hospital. Because three grand is... <laughs> fuck me, that's a lot. But yeah, so it's... It's okay, ambulance. Just drop me off in yeah, here. It's just a lake. But it's nice to have that. I'm glad that I set that up because it's just... A, it's the next step, step now where I know that that's an expense going forward. Yeah. Where when I go and take this full-time eventually, right... Mm-hmm. I know that that expense is built in now. I know how much it's going to cost me, and I know that I have it. I have the benefits, so it's like I've taken care of that part. It's fine. I'm I'm taking care of there. Now it's now I can focus more on the building the company. I can focus more on paying myself. And then you're yeah, and then I'm good. So, Mm -hmm. which it's a good feeling, man. Getting there. We getting there. We getting there. A couple more (laughs) contracts. I keep telling myself that. No, no, it's just three or four more contracts, like full time contracts, and they'll be fine. And then I get them, and I go. Maybe like three or four more, more. <laughs> and then like, and then I'll be fine. You know. I gotta say, like I, uh, I was nervous at first when I when I wasn't like full full time employed anymore, or like part time employed, and just working on myself. And uh, now it's paying it's off. Pretty nice, it's paying like, off. Yeah, well, it's, it's getting the. I, I'm actually making more than I was while I had the part time jobs beforehand. So it's nice to like dedicate that extra time. Crazy but, how that works, right? Yeah, but it's like it was a huge risk because I, I didn't know if there's gonna be that many projects coming. And everyone in. has to do it. Every yeah. el- every person who owns a business yeah. or is an entrepreneur at some point has to point. make that leap. Yeah. And I am so fucking scared. <laughs> it's terrifying <laughs> to eventually make that like, leap. Because like you really do have to live below your means. Oh. So like, and oh. if you don't, you're fucked. Oh. Like if you spend your money, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, uh, nobody's gonna bail you out. Prepare to get thirty five percent taxed. Mm. On everything, Jesus. like it's just uh so bad. But yeah, but I'm I'm I, I'll be excited and nervous to make that leap all at the same time. When I can yeah. eventually make that leap, I'm gonna be like, this is um, this Bullshit. is gonna be interesting. <laughs> 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 we'll see how this fucking goes. This sucks. So yeah, but no, I I'm excited and I, I yeah. like where we're, where we're going with it, and everything, and um, yeah, I think, but I think that more people just need to be. I think more people would be comfortable starting or like, you know, becoming business owners mm-hmm. if they knew, if they were literate in this kind of thing, oh, if yeah. they read up on it, if they were, if they were taught this from a younger age. Right. I think, I don't think that entrepreneurship is an inherited trait. Right. No, I think it really is not. It's a, it's a learned thing. I think that there are people like that just, you know, right. Yeah. From like a very young age, like, I don't know about you, but like I knew from a very young age that eventually like, this is not for me. The normal yeah. nine to five, I knew from a, being a child that mm-hmm. that wasn't for me. I didn't know what it was. I, for a while, I thought it was acting. I just couldn't imagine sitting in one spot doing the same yeah. job. On, I was just. Over. I always knew I would never work in a factory. Yeah. I would never work fast food. Mm-hmm. Right. Like those were not my come ups. Did not want to do those. I worked in food and I worked in factories and it was not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, okay, like I'm in hey, a bills, restaurant but... business now, but it's not fast food. Right. right? I would. I refuse. Yeah, I never did fast food. And I could never do factory. I was like, the monotony of that Dude. makes me want to just blow my brains out. Also, it was bullshit. I told you about my yeah. shit. Yeah. And it's just like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I knew from a young age, but yeah. I, so, uh, so some people, yes, you know, but I don't, I think that it, it is a learned thing for sure. Definitely. I think that, yeah. you know, you can, somebody can be however many years old working a nine to five job and then all of a sudden going, this is fucking bullshit. I don't like this anymore. I'm uh, this has gotten me nowhere. <laughs> you know, I have a house. Yeah. yeah. But I'm constantly worried. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't have enough time to actually spend in this house. Yeah. Like I, uh, I spent all this money paying for it, but I don't get to experience it. And, and this one, uh, there's a book I read. It was, uh, and I think I've said this on the show before, uh, but it was a, it was by Grant Cardone and say what you will about the guy. Some people think he's nuts. Some people think he's right. I don't know. He's a little bit of both. Yeah. But he, 
there's a part. You kind of need to be. Yeah. So. <laughs> there's a there's a excerpt in his book, uh, the 10x rule, where he talks about um, uh, basically like wealth status comparative to instability with the economy, right? Mm. So basically, he talks about you know upper class. Uh, like, you know, the 1%, the upper class, the upper middle class, middle class, and lower class, right? Okay. And he talks about all of them, and he goes through and says, okay, so in an economic downturn, say 2008, right, when shit hits the absolute fan hmm. and people start losing their ass, he said, who do you think is the most vulnerable in that situation? He said, it's not the upper class, right? right? The upper class is set. They, they have enough put away, in other terms, where they're still going to come out the other side upper class. Yeah. Some of which are going to use the economic downturn to make more money. That's just how it happens. More, more entrepreneurs are made, or more millionaires are made during an economic downturn in 2008 than almost any other time. Jesus. And same with the Great Depression. There was more uh, millionaires made <laughs> through the Great Depression because that's just, people have nothing else to do. But anyways, um, so they said, okay, it's not the upper class, right? They, they're set. Right. They, they have generational wealth. They're fine. They're the 1%, right? Upper middle class is going to fall to the middle class, right? Okay. So they'll, they'll still be okay. Yeah, they're still, they're still going to be... They're going to be fine. They, yeah. they still can make that money. Lower class has the government that is there to support them already, right? They know what it's like in these... They're not, they can't go lower. Right. They're at where they're at. Middle class is the most vulnerable people during an economic depression. Yep, because they're the most volatile at that point. So. so it's like, why would I want to work a nine to five to maintain an to maintain? A, yeah. I, OK, cool. I get to call myself middle class, but I'm in the most vulnerable position of any class of people in, in our in our nation. Because hmm. like there's no support. There's no support for the middle class. Yeah. Like I will. F there's support when I hit lower. Right. 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 Like there's that bottom shelf that I can hit. But, but that is a decline in my wealth. But also once you get to that lowest point, there's no getting out of it. Like the yeah. Go the government now you're stuck. You in, yeah. Now so. you're stuck. Now it's way fucking harder. Yep. So to get out. It's like uh, it's like the pit the pit of sadness. You ever see uh, the never ending story before? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember that little bog that they were going through where uh, with like, the horse? Oh, with the horse. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like when you're when you're broke and like you have to start relying on, on the government. Yeah. That sounds about right. And it's like oh no, they're just pulling it's me awful. further in. Ugh. Awful. <laughs> Uh, you are on one today, huh, babe? <laughs> I was gonna start creating a, like a set of memes that was like, uh, have you seen those those host gator commercials where it's like, uh, don't get stuck or getting stuck sucks, blah 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 blah. Join host gator so you never have to worry about getting stuck online again, blah blah blah. Oh god. No. And uh, so I'm gonna set set up a whole stream of memes where it's just people getting stuck in horrible ways in movies, <laughs> like the, 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 the and that's just host gator. Hey, host gator, don't get stuck anywhere. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was gonna do saw where it shows the guy sawing his leg. <laughs> Don't get stuck again. Getting stuck sucks. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh shit! But no, I think just I think the the uh, the, the point behind this whole episode yeah. of the podcast is that just be, just teach yourself. You are invest the master of your own world. Teach, yeah. Invest the money in yourself. Well, not even just the money, but the time. The like, time and money, everything. Yeah. Invest in yourself, no matter what it is. Like take the leaps on yourself because. It, it can only fail if you decide it fails. That actually brings me full circle back to what I was saying that I'm going to be releasing in the next few weeks. Um, so that class drop thing. Yeah, yeah. So I built a platform um, called Class Drop, which is like a video education system. It's kind of like Skillshare, but it's more broad spectrum. So I started talking to professionals across the United States about like, hey, can you teach a couple courses on any kind of profession? Yep, like yep. if you're an engineer, teach some engineering engineering courses. If you're good bartender you know teach some bartending classes that kind of thing and now people can subscribe to this platform and watch all the professional videos that they want about the certain industry that they're trying to get right. into so it kind of gives you a way to learn experience or get get experience in a field without actually having to be there but it also pays the people that want to post the content Bingo. for every video that's watched so it's a, it's a nice little trade off for uh, getting you the, the right knowledge for a, for a new job position right so it's a way for you to kind of invest in yourself without actually having to like Go to school and yeah. do all this extra shit. So, so check it out; it's coming out soon. We yeah. will uh, we'll let you know when that gets released. First week of April, it's gonna be it's gonna be hey, launched. There we Completely go. So we, have a, we have a release date. Now. Oh yeah. So yeah, so. Uh, be on the lookout for that. We'll put a link in our description once it gets dropped and everything yeah. too. Um, but yeah, otherwise, guys, we'll end this episode. This is a little longer one. It's 40, yeah. minutes, 40 minutes, but That's good though. We'll just let you guys know. Just invest in yourself. Okay. If you have any inclination that you're like, I don't want to fucking work for other people, 
do the work. Start do start it. somewhere. Start anywhere. Baby because steps. You're just, it's just like uh, it's like Jim Carrey says. It's like it's one stone or one block at a time. You're just mm-hmm. building the ho- the foundation of the house. Just yeah. One at a time. But you got to do it. Got to do the work. So yeah. It's got to be every day. Of course, with Jake and Walker, you knew it was going to be financial <laughs> talk. It always fucking is. It always ends up in. But we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Don't quit it. Hit it. Pass it to your friends. Hide your kids. Hide your wives. Because we out here making great content. The best. Uh, this episode is brought to you by JD Creations LLC, AstroDesignCompany.com, dot com, uh, Hardware Coffee Company, and that's it. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to check out Thirst Homeless on YouTube. Check out Johnny Wishbone on YouTube. Check all of us out on. Instagram, I guess. I don't know. Facebook. Instagram. <laughs> I have Instagram. I look never yeah, on. I know. <laughs> Check us all out. Um, otherwise, guys, have a great rest of the week. We love you. We have love you. We'll day. see you next week for episode 99. Holy shit. Walk, or, uh, Drake will be here. It'll be my birthday. It's your birthday. So we'll get what do you want for your birthday, man? Uh, more subscribers. Ha! I want 1,000 subscribers for my birthday, folks. Anything else you want for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Anything easier that we can get you for your fucking birthday. <laughs> No, I want a thousand subscribers right. by next week, folks. Do it. You hear that, people? <laughs> Help us out. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you again for joining us for another episode of What We Learned This Week, and we will see you next week. Uh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Nala, say bye. Nala, say bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Adios.